All right, how's everyone doing? I am Rich Chalenza. Thanks for checking out the Rich Chalenza Show. So what I'm going to talk about in this podcast is a lot of your past really doesn't matter. But a lot of us carry baggage from our past that really can destroy our future, especially emotionally, I think, a lot of times. And the reason I bring this up is I was actually watching a quick TikTok on Gary V. And sometimes, you know, he says things and I love it. Uh, more than ever, probably. I like how he just says whatever he feels, and I just agree with what he says a lot, to be honest with you. I just think we're, uh, I just, a lot of things he says I like. So he talked about grades in school, and, you know, a lot of things they talk about him being a horrible student. I wasn't a good student as well. But it's kind of interesting he mentioned how the grades that people have gotten in their past really affects them later in life, even though no one sees those grades and you may have gone on to college or maybe not, or maybe you have a career, maybe not, but you always kind of carry something in the back of your head saying, I'm stupid because I wasn't good in school or I was a bad student. Like I just kind of said, and now, uh, blah, blah, blah. It really doesn't matter. If you think about it at this point in time, now, if you're trying to get into it, if you're younger, of course, at that point in time, it does matter, especially if you're trying to maybe get into a certain high school or stay in a certain high school, like kind of I went to a private Catholic high school, or if you're going to a college, uh, maybe you're going to law school or medical school. Yes, of course, all that's going to matter. And being a good student is part of the game. Let's call it for what it is. Uh, but if you were out of that for a substantial amount of time where, again, you know, you did whatever you wanted to do, if you graduated or if you didn't graduate or whatever the case may be, your grades really have nothing to do with your life anymore. But I do think a lot of us grow up thinking, oh my God, I used to be a, you know, a C student. I was average. I was, uh, I was always struggling. I failed this class. Uh, like, I'll just give you another example. I had a horrible time trying to learn another, another language. I took French in third grade. I only remember one word, baby, on there. Well, I know a few other, but I'm just saying. When I was taking it, I had such... Whatever. I had a lot of problems. So I carried... That oh yeah, and I never even took a language in high school. I, I think I was the only one who didn't take a language. I think you were supposed to take it two years. I refused to take it. They didn't say anything to me. That's how nuts I was in high school. I should do crazy shit, but I think because I was a pretty good athlete, I got away with certain things. And the truth was, I was so horrible in French. It kind of carried on to high school. I'm like, I'm not learning Spanish. Plus, if I'm not learning anything, I'm Italian. I'm not learning anything but Italian. I was that arrogant. And I didn't care. I said, I'll drop out of school. And they're like, no, let's put you in this instead or let's whatever they worked out for me. I never took a language. And I don't know anybody else in high school that's ever gone through that. Maybe, I'm sure maybe other people. But usually you have to take a language for at least one or two years. To make a long story short, I always wanted to learn Italian. But I was in fear of my past not knowing or thinking about I was horrible at learning languages. Well, maybe at that platform or maybe that environment, I was horrible. But for the last X amount of years, I've been learning Italian. And I used to hear it from my ancestors and my immigrant grandparents and others as well growing up. But it was kind of slang. But I said, you know what, F that. And I just went on and I'm learning Italian, you know, because I always wanted to. And my point being is in this podcast is a lot of times back to your past, not just great. We hold on to all this shit and we let it paralyze ourselves from doing a lot of things that maybe at this point in time in our life that we want to do. You may have been a horrible athlete in high school, grade school, middle school, whatever. That does not mean you're a horrible athlete as an adult. Maybe you aren't that coordinated, but I can assure you, you can develop a lot of skills. You, again, are kind of caught back there. Even education. Again, I said it. I'm not not that good of a, you know... uh, I guess you could say I was definitely not good at writing and things in that nature, English class, all that. And I went on to write a couple books and I ended up, I spent more time in my life writing than anything else. And in my past, the one thing I despised was writing, going to the library and schoolwork or reading. It doesn't make any sense. But I finally, as I got older, said, this is what I like to do. Just because I wasn't successful back then or I wasn't successful at learning the things or writing about the things that they were trying to have me write doesn't mean I'm not good at writing about what I want to write about. It could be even, you know, anything I'm doing in life. I can't let the past hold me back. And I know you hear it a lot, but I don't think we really realize how much it does. So I just want to do a podcast on this. Don't, I talk about it, don't sell yourself short and do not let with the past. And I don't want you to not learn from the past or keep repeating. Like if, if you're a, 
If you keep investing in something in your past and you keep losing money, I don't want you necessarily doing the same thing over to keep losing money. That's not what I'm saying. I do want you to learn from your past, I guess you could say. But I don't want you to think that things in your past, you know what I mean, Uh, that they're always going to be that way in the future because there's a lot of changes that you're probably making every single day and you're evolving. And with technology and everything, you're probably becoming a lot more educated than you ever were as well, most likely compared to the past. At least that's how I look at it because most of my information when I was younger came from books, which I didn't want to read a lot of times, the news or my family members and friends. Now, let's face it, I have all these different outlets to learn a lot. So I'm going to wrap it up there. If you got any questions or comments, you could just hit me up. Uh, I do consulting for mainly men, lately some women actually, but... uh, Yeah, it's just all opinion-based as far as my podcasts go. Sometimes I'm getting hit up with people. I'm like, listen, I'm not here to tell you how to live your life or not live it. I'm just here to give you my opinion on what I think may or may not work for you. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. But if it does, God bless. But uh, if you want to reach out to me, Rich at Rich Chalenza, uh, my consulting firm, richtalenza.com, and then my program where I try to help men find the woman or women of their dreams, even if they've been through a bad breakup or divorce, is masteringselfconfidence.com. All right, build that confidence.